Hello everyone, myself Sabri and I welcome you to our channel Solution Bridge Network and one-stop solution for all your power platform tutorials. In this video, we are going to see about scheduled cloud flow. Whenever you want to run a specific set of tasks on a recurring interval, you should be opting for a scheduled cloud flow. I'm already on the Power Automate. You can just get into the site by hitting the URL make.powerautomate.com. Once you are in this home page, probably you can just go to create and you will find the different types of flows available. And now we are going to see more in detail about scheduled cloud flow. Once you click it, you will be prompted to enter the flow name and when the flow should run. So here the use case what I have taken is this flow will go to a specific data source that is SharePoint list where it has the complete list of employees. So it filters only the active employee and send an email to the specific person on every Monday. So let's say the name of the flow as active employee extract. And I'm saying that it should repeat on every Monday. So let's say starting today at 10 a.m. repeat one, I'll say week. And here you will have the days of the week. You just select Monday. So you can see this flow will run on Monday every week. So we are good to go with that. So you can click on create. Now you can see that there is a recurrence trigger that has been auto created. So I would like to switch back to the old designer, which I'm more familiar with. So probably you can just go to this toggle and toggle it back. So Power Automate will take you back to the old designer view. So this is the recurrence trigger that got created. So if you expand it, you will be able to see it runs on Monday every week. If you want to edit it, you can click on edit and probably you can expand this show advanced option to make the required changes. So here you have a privilege to set that time as well. If you want to run that flow on Monday at a specific time. So let's say it says one time a week that is on Monday and you can expand it and set it as 9 a.m. Make sure you set the time zone. So let's say click the drop down and select, set the time zone as IST. So you can search for Chennai. Let me click here and type in Chennai so that you will get UTC 5.30 that is Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai and New Delhi time. So as per this recurrence, what currently we are doing is this flow gets initiated one time a week that is on every Monday at 9 a.m. and the time zone that it follows is UTC plus 5.30. Now let's add the action. Here as I said earlier, it should go to my SharePoint list which is called data site and refer the employee information list and it just look the complete information available in there, filter the employee which has the value 1 and send an email. So let's get back to the flow and here we can look out for a SharePoint connector. So you can type in SharePoint and you can click that SharePoint option. So you will be able to see the list of actions that is available as a part of SharePoint connector. Here we need to get the complete list of item in a specific SharePoint list. So I'll say it as get. So you can see get items. So probably you can click on get items and here you need to fill in the site address list name. So let me click the drop down and you know that my site is data site and upon selecting the site your list name will be auto filtered based on the site and you can select the required list which is employee information. Once this information is filled you can click on save. Here you can see the status. Once it is saved, we can check if our flow is working. You get a pop-up named flow checker, which has one warning highlighted. It says updating actions, get item to use O data filter queries can improve the performance. So what it tells us here, we are about to get the complete SharePoint entries. So Power Automate advises to use filters so that we can just take the required data only. So in our case, we should filter only active, so which we will be doing it on the later part. So let's test the flow and see how it works. To achieve that, you can click on this test option and here you will not be able to do it automatically. So go with manually test. 
can click on run flow here you can see that your flow ran successfully so let's wait for the designer to come up yes so expand the get items so as we said it should go to the site address of data site and list of employee information so we have the output i'll click this so you will get a new page where you will be able to see the list of sharepoint entries so you can see here this is the item one id one title is zero employees one kumar hr so this is what actually we have it here you can see that is active column is nothing but title here so i just renamed the title option as is active so let's come to the power automate and start editing it as suggested by the flow checker we can just apply a filter query here and this is an old data filter query so probably there is an alternative option by which you can just use a drop down method to get this filtered query so probably to achieve that go to the settings and in view all power automate settings make sure that this experimental feature is turned on and you click on save once this is done your power automate site will get this reloaded and your flow will be reopened since i have changed the setting i lost my sharepoint get items connector so probably what i can do i can just add it back so i'll call it as sharepoint go to the sharepoint and you can select the connector as get items and you can fill in the required information so the site address is data site list name as employee information you can observe that there is a small change in the ui what you can see so you can just click on show advanced option now you have the filter query which is like a drop down so probably you can select it you can select the title and you can say the value should be equal to one and now you can save it so what this connector does is it goes to the data site look out for the list employee information and it goes into the item of the list and it just checks if the title of that item is equal to one if yes then it just adds it to the current output as a next step we will be adding an csv table creation so let's say type csv and in the data operation you will find an option called create a csv table so here it just has only one input it is asking from which data you need to create a csv so you click this here add this dynamic content option and you just have the values so just select it if you want you can just expand the additional options here the columns will be created automatically so if you want to create a custom column you can just go with custom give the header name and value so currently i'll just go with automatic once this is done you can save it so our next intended action is to send this as an email attachment so let's call the outlook connector go to the outlook here in the actions of outlook you can search for send an email so you have an option called send an email v2 so it's creating the connection it might take 30 to 40 seconds to get the connection created once it's successful it will be asking you the information it is two so let me fill in my email and the subject i can say it as active employee extract here i'll say hi please find attached the current active employee extract So you can go to the advanced option and here in the name of the attachment you can say active employee dot csv and in the attachment content you can select the dynamic content and you can just pass in the output of the csv once this is done you can click on save let's do a test i'll go here send it manually test and run the flow done so now i could see that your flow ran successfully so it should have sent an email to my outlook so let's click on the three dot open the outlook in a new tab and let's see if we have received the email 
there you go you have an active employee extract email with a csv attachment so let's open it if you see here there are so many unwanted columns which we can just avoid in the extract so probably we just go back to the power automate and we will just make the changes in this create csv table section which i have shown earlier click on show advanced option and in the columns you just set that automatic to custom so we just need only four to five columns which we call here it as employee name i'll call the next column what i need is i'll go to the sharepoint site for the reference it's employee id employee name employee id so these are the four columns which we should have it in the output of the csv table now it is time for us to pass in the values for each of the sections so before we write an expression to add the value we would like to understand the naming convention what the sharepoint does when executing the flow so i would like to duplicate this tab and i'll just go and see the run history to understand the naming convention this is the flow what we have created so let's let's get one step back and here you will be able to see the 28 days run history so you can just expand the latest run history and you can just expand the get item section so if you scroll down you can click the output and here you will be able to understand the naming convention so it is employee name as a single word employee id as a single word department and doj let's come back here so let's start typing in our code if you click on the value you will see there is two pop-ups coming up one is add dynamic value and other is a place where you can add an expression click the place where you can add an expression and probably you could just type in item open close bracket followed by a question mark and again uh, open and close square bracket and inside that you should just put a single inverted comma and type in the name of the column so first column is employee name so copy this so that we can use it in the rest of the contents so click on save i'll be repeating this for the other columns as well so i'll call it as employee id Now we can save the flow and just go for a test my flow is saving and let's go to the test manual and do a test says flow ran successfully so let me go to my outlook i can see there is an email at 12 37 and let's try opening that and see if we have just have only the four desired columns what we need to have there you go we have uh, employee name employee id department and date of joining by this we come to end of this video if you have any questions please post it in the comment section and we will be able to respond to you as soon as possible thanks for watching subscribe our channel hit the like button and Press the bell icon for our new video alerts.